Here's kind of a 101 tutorial on 3D design, just giving some basic concepts here. There could probably be a whole slew of 101 tutorials. Um, but right now we're kind of covering texture mapping and uh, UV lighting and normal mapping and stuff like that, just to explain the concepts. Um, here we have a piece of land, and uh, right now it currently does have a texture to it. So you can just see it's mapped. It only has a one-sided plane versus a two-sided plane, which if you do Google SketchUp at all, um, you'll learn that when you go to I don't want to use the term bake in animation, but if you uh, send something out to be used in a game, you have to use two-sided uh, uh, faces, uh, or you'll see holes in your uh, object. But anyways, I'm just trying to familiar, familiarize everyone with uh, the terms. So let's come down, let's look at uh, our land now mapped with a texture. And so a little fun thing I've tried to set up for... Uh, for for everyone that's helping with the game design is uh, currently we have uh, my brother David and Jack that are helping out and I know we've got some other people on the way uh, in here uh, once you accept the shared folder invite for Dropbox I've kinda created a fun little uh, thing where I've got some concept art in here involving uh, primitive weapons to uh, shields so you can kind of brainstorm a little bit and add or take away to that as you see fit and then uh, I've given you some starter uh, materials and then in the crafted items uh, Jack hasn't crafted anything yet but my, I've got my brother's stone mace and his wood bow in there and I uh, need to drop his latest uh, farming uh, tool in there so uh, let's uh, come back over here and so uh, what I've given you guys is this other area I'm even trying to make the uh, the game development shared folder like a game in and of itself just to be fun with it um, I've, I've given us uh, several things to work with so let's uh, go check out the Orvane folder so in there you've got um, you've got this patch of ore uh, which we can play with and then you've got the uh, larger patch so that's basically what we're looking at you're not I mean obviously only here will uh, you be able to look at it in 3d but you can use your imagination there and what you've got is uh, you've got the uh, this is basically the file you can uh, you you can open up in Microsoft Paint or uh, some of the free programs out there and modify and then this is the normalized image of it, which I believe is used for light mapping. Uh, we can get the, into uh, what a normalized image is used for later. Uh, right now, we'll just focus on the uh, normal texture map. So then we'll come and uh, look at some of these um, images here. All right, I had to check why these are TGA files, which is a Targa file. Um, and it looks like, say, see on this sword, what they've done is given some of these swords, see how you can read the fo folder names behind it? They've given it a transparency. And um, I'm not sure if that's because, just to give you the option, it's kind of changing the tint of the sword um, by applying a uh, material behind it. So let's look at the just to explain the difference between materials and textures um, here we'll look at the land patch without a texture or material applied to it and then let's come in here and let's apply even though it says no texture we'll apply uh, we can come in here and we can add like any color we wanted or something and basically a color would be more of a material while a texture would be something cut out like this bow where it's actually, or the sword over here, and that's more of a texture that's cut out. But we'll just apply like this generic asphalt texture to it, and then you can see how, uh, how ha I mean, sorry, how having just a, a material like that would uh, come in handy. So uh, we'll go back up and select no. And uh, so far, these are just uh, the terms as I understand them so far, as I gain more knowledge I'll keep updating everyone it's just so we could be you know up to snuff alright so uh, target files I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to use those so I need to probably convert these all to something Microsoft Paint can open 
Uh, one thing I do know it can open is a bitmap file. So let's look at the raw bitmap file for our wolf. And so here's kind of the front on view and uh, the, side, the perspective view of something discoverable that you'd find in the game. And so say you wanted to make a scarier wolf, what you do is you'd open up this file and paint and then you can like add uh, blood streaks to him. You could add, um, you know, make his eyes scarier, whatever, some fangs. Um, you know, it would be kind of fun just to draw stuff on him and see how it shows up in the game. So, while we're waiting on that, let me just kind of start this. This is a, uh, he's using a different program called Curvy 3D, and this is, uh, you know, uh, this is the YouTube guy, YTC3D's uh, channel. And so we'll just kind of start this playing so you can see what he's doing. And I'll kind of walk it through because he didn't explain. He's just coming over here. He's changing his color palette. He's got it sped up in fast mode. Um, he's probably using a pen tool, um, like one of those tablets that you actually write on with a, a, you know, a computerized pen and draw on it. And so he's just kind of going through. Um, sometimes he picks his color from his uh, model back here and he's just kind of painting on him so we'll come back and check on that in a little bit um, let's look at our um, so let's go back to our sword and so basically if we came and looked at the Targa file Um, and added some blood or rust to the edge of this um, and then changed uh, added like in the center here on the sword you know like if you that's why I encourage everyone on Skyrim to really start playing around with the images and looking at how they're using techniques like embossing and um, other things to lift and give 3d dimension even though it's not actually living inside the 3d object see how flat this 3d object is which is good because you need those uh, real lightweight polygon uh, least amount of vertices when you're making a, th a 3d game um, just to be able to render everything so here he is a little bit further just kind of drawn in the details so you could potentially do stuff like this on uh, you know on the sword um, let's let's take a look at something else in the background uh, let's take a look at our quiver pouch oh this one has actually has the arrows in it but um, doing like a more fancy leather type design with the studs you can see even though like when you look on it on the side it's actually flat so this embossing is what gives that extra 3D depth when really it's actually a pretty small um, polygon uh, object. So just trying to go over the concepts. Let's go uh, look at this rock here. Um, so we've got the ore vein. And so this uh, rock is mapped out through this type of uh, object. So you could come in here add some more uh, different shiny colors. You can copy and paste colors from uh, images that you find on Google and um, and create some stuff there. Let me pause it see if there's anything else uh, I should catch you guys up. Oh yeah, I just remembered the shield. Um, so we'll come in here, uh, look at the front view and then the back view of the shield. And then I'll uh, load it up over here. Okay, so here's our shield. Um, and then we'll come in here. We'll look at the TIFF file. And again, I can go and save these all out as bitmaps for you so that you can open them in Microsoft Paint. I just need to know what file format you guys need. Um, so you can see there's the kind of front, um, back, the handle on the inside. And so, um, like here, and so here it is in 3D, just mapped to it. And so we can kind of come through here and look at some different designs already mocked up. 
and give you some just little ideas. So hopefully that uh, gets the beginning concepts going. And I'll keep making these. So thanks again, guys. Talk to you later.